I have an idea. Let's work on our tan. Ah, oh, yeah. Part one has begun. Conan and Jody, or Death Axe and Elmira, whatever kind of random barbarian name you want to slap on, not Conan. We're going to be working on his tan flesh today. And I'm also pulling in a bit of the environmental effect because this is a jungle scene, so I'm working some green into it. But I want to show you how I navigate through a flesh tone. There will be another video in this series navigating a lighter and paler flesh tone, but I think you will see the similarity here. Just notice that I'm only using one out of the bottle flesh tone. There's so many flesh tones on the market, you really only need one or two, possibly three, none at all. You can mix these colors up yourself or you can use something right out of the bottle. But the core concept is I have one color that's kind of my root color and then everything else off of that I'm pulling in blues, greens, some brown tones, a bit of red, a bit of yellow to create a very human looking flesh. It can be kind of intimidating to some people so I hope that after this video skin is a little less scary. Here he is, Body of Power, Sword of Rage, Mind of Iron, Conan, or Conan, the Barbarian, or Barbarian. <clears throat> Anyways, let's take a look at the palette cam. So in play, Iridian Flesh, Exile Blue, Battlefield Brown, Kator Red Base, Ordic Olive, all from P3, Vallejo Black, and Vallejo Buff. It's hard to say black and then buff, right? Vallejo bluff. So the first thing I'm going to do, base coat the model with that Iridian flesh. I'm trying to create a darker, more tan Sumerian skin tone. And this is a fun project because it gives me a chance to work on uh, at least two different skin tones. A lot of people have trouble with skin tones, so we're here to eliminate the fear. We'll do a deeper tan on Conan, and I think Conan and Conan every time that I say his name, we'll get over that eventually. Um, and then on the princess, I can put a much more fair and pale complexion. But to start off, in the first video, we're going to work on old tan man himself, Mr. Conan. All right, base tan, check, ready for the beach. Let's color these muscles in. So Iridian Flesh is going to be my main anchor tone. I'll be mixing in bits of Ordic Olive as I shade downward, and then amounts of Battlefield Brown into a bit of Exile Blue. We're going to mix and match a little bit. So, looking at each piece is just kind of a general geometric shape. It'll come a time to pick out his muscles later, all of those dimensions, but for now, I want to pull the scope of focus back a little bit. See, so we'll sweep some green in there, and just get an overall kind of temperature gauge going. I'll bring some brown into that mixture. Okay, let's speed things up a little bit, but do not forget I'm using Vallejo Buff to mix in the brighter portions as well, maintaining that greenish jungle atmosphere, but wherever I have an upward facing angle as defined by my zenithal base coat, I'll bring a little bit of that sweet ivory in there, Vallejo Buff, but it's ivory to me, pick out all those muscles and just kind of go back and forth and refine and define. Now this is an important part on the bottom of the leg. I've brought blue into the mixture, but the green still exists. So four colors all mixed together at one time. Decent start. Let's work up the chest. So we'll just apply some of that 
base flesh tone. Grab a little bit of Ortic Olive. Mix it right in. Just keep moving it back and forth until you're happy with the result. Everyone's can be a little different. That's okay. I'll bring a little brown in to the shadow. So there's the base coat all uh, dry and complete. Now what I'll do is go in and fix things up with a little bit of glazing and thin layers. You're going to notice that the uh, landscape of his rippling shoulders changes a bit as it gets back here. That's because this uh, princess, once she's added into the mix, she's casting a bit of a shadow. So I want to be mindful of that and really, you know, take every opportunity I can to make some interesting happenings and enhancements and all that jazz. You can see a natural shadow being cast from the model. There he is with out <laughs> and there he is with so I'll definitely be adding that to his skin tone and you can also see uh, the little practice arm that I did before I made this video a little behind the scenes there for you so let's get into it just a little bit of water on the brush we'll go back to our green and flesh tone mixture And I'm just kind of solidifying all these kind of hazy blends that are going on from the wet blending. You know, it's kind of that rough, uh, quicker take. I'm just going and saturating these colors, just adding very thin layers. Here, I'll show you how thin it is. You see, nothing to it. Oop, I lost a stabilizer cork. Keep that under his foot so he's not flopping around. But I'll just go in and glaze some of the mid-tones down. Just do a little uh, color correction. Make sure that my highlights are nice and bright. Kind of enhance those. Bring things to tighter and finer points as well. And at this point, I start picking out some of the uh, some of the smaller details. When we're starting off with the wet blend, we don't pay as much attention to that. But now, bring some highlights into play. And again, I want to maintain that shadow in that area. So, although I want to highlight it, I won't use the same brightness. We'll take a little bit of green. An Iosin Flesh, Ortic Olive is the green. I don't think of these colors by their name in my head. It's just green, blue, red, etc. So apologies if I happen to forget. But yeah, we'll add to this shadow that's the princess is casting. See, I, I jump around a lot when I'm working on a on a figure. I'm all over the place. But I'm just adding to the depth here. This time I have a mixture of Ortic Olive Exile Blue, Battlefield Brown. You can see this larger brush is giving me a lot of control. Uh, just keep in mind the amount of mileage that I'm getting out of a brush load. I'm not constantly going back to the palette for more paint. In fact, it kind of gets better as I use the brush more, more paint comes off. And I get a thinner layer with more control. It's easy to get lost in all the dark areas, but be mindful of the mid-tone. It's just as important. Sometimes pieces can get lost. For me, I'll lose a color as it becomes all shadow and all highlight. That mid-tone kind of goes away, so I always remind myself to go back in there. Just add another pass of those mid-tones. It's only going to increase the saturation. Yeah, 
and glazing up the highlights it's just a mixture again of that iridian flesh vallejo buff and an ortic olive just want to maintain that slight touch of green throughout the whole thing Here he sits after that step. Take a look around. Okay. Get a little bit of uh, sepia from FW Ink. Now we'll get a big puddle of water, like so. I'm going to take a touch of sepia ink. I will also take a bit of that battlefield brown, a bit of the green, and maybe just a little bit of black to to deepen it. So gives me this this tone in the end. Seems like a lot of mixing and work for little reward, but want to add the viscosity of the paint with the to the tone of the the acrylics so I'm just mixing up my own wash and the acrylics the risk that you run by using the ink wash is that you get a very glossy take so if I mix up an opaque color and come and throw that in with the ink that will uh, I can avoid that catastrophe but I also get to add the viscosity of the ink, which helps the paint kind of slip into the recesses and settle where I want it to. So it just acts as a nice filter to marry the tones together. I just want to pick one section of the model at a time. Okay, now that all that's settled, I can attend to some of the smaller details. Um, I've added Liquitex Titanium White to my palette, but I want to ask myself questions about his complexion in certain areas, you know, or the around his eyes, his nose, his elbows, his knuckles, his knees. Would these areas be a little more red? And I also want to place some very uh, specific highlights and, you know, just very small amounts to kind of sharpen a lot of the, the shapes and contrast going on here so I left my maroon paint at uh, Scott's house but I'll mix them up with Cato Red Base and Vallejo Black let's make ourselves a dark red and then pull a bit of the Iridian Flesh into that and just over the knees just glaze a very thin amount on uh, maybe just a little bit around on the face. Get his elbows and his knuckles. Maybe reclaim or bring a little bit more of this green into play. I'm feeling frosty. Just glaze a little bit more mid-tone into this. Because I want to maintain that green atmosphere, some of it may have been filtered away by the wash, but I'm throwing this in kind of off to the side and mid area, kind of leading up to every shadow, but also casting over onto the sides. So the area facing forward doesn't have a shadow framing it, but leading outwards we have this slightly green hue. Okay, we'll take a little Vallejo buff, combine that with some titanium white. Very small, fine areas. We'll add 
the slightest of highlights. Less is more in this situation. So that sums up our color combination to create this skin tone, but I wanted to add some extra info here. I'm working on his face, picking out the T zone, which basically if you just draw a letter T on someone's face, those are kind of the areas of interest. We want to bring out the cheekbones, the nose, the brow line, maybe the upper lip a little bit. As humans, we tend to focus on the face and hands in miniatures and pieces of art. So just a natural focal point where you might want to spend some extra time bringing the model to life. And I'll just be continuing to do a little dancing and balancing around wherever certain areas of uh, brightness and shadow are not intense enough. I'm going to go and kind of tighten the screws dial things in in very tight, minute amounts. You can see I'm really getting in there with a fine point brush, applying those tiny dots and slashes, very minuscule blends, but it, it's helping to push all of that mid-tone and all of that work uh, much closer to the finish line, much closer to uh, a personally acceptable level. You can choose to uh, release yourself from these chains at any point or you can remain lashed to the grinding wheel and continue to push and pull until you are happy with your muscle warrior and there it is i hope you enjoyed this video i want to say thank you for supporting this patreon hopefully this helped to shine a light on composing a skin tone there are many ways to slice it and we'll cover more varieties of skin tone in the future, but this particular piece, being Conan the Barbarian, really called to me, something I've been into since I was a wee boy. So, I'm looking forward to the future, we'll be bringing this project to life, and remember, we have a world to paint. See you next time. Conan, the adventurer, Conan, the bodybuilder, Conan, with a swinging sword and his leather boots. Look at that metal belt, Conan, with his midnight black hair, Conan, something like that. <laughs>